Hi, I'm Jesse Alec, and I am G3. Number 14, life below water. Uh, PD is surrounded by water. Well, most of it is surrounded by water. And we have a great coral reef right out here. And it's, it's important for us as, as PD residents because we live, um, we live in the area and that we contribute to the growth of not only the coral reef, but also to the, to the life that lives in the ocean. And so in working with our Manumkul and working with our Manhobin to educate them about the pollution, about sedimentation, about plant growth, uh, even washing cars and how all of that affects our coral reef and, and our preserves is important because we live in PT and because we live in, in a very, you know, in a part of Guam that is uh, reliant on this reef and, and the preserves really. And so in working with our Manhoban and our Manamko, I think that we'll get the word out to, to achieve uh, Badge 14. Hey everyone and welcome to the second Guam Green Growth Biannual Meeting. Thank you so much for joining us and for going virtual with us this morning as well. My name is Kyle Mandapat and I am the Assistant Director for Communications here at the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and we have got a lot to catch you up on today. We want to do so before your I'm done with zooming for the daylight turns on so let's get ready for the ride. Now, before we start, I want to make a shout out to Speaker Therese Terlahi from the 36th Guam Legislature for joining us virtually. I saw you in the waiting room, madam. Thank you so much. Today, we're going to be joined by our co-chairs, our steering committee co-chairs, our global partners, our working group members, and we're going to present two new recipients, their G3 commitment badges. We're also going to have some time for some Q&A a little bit later on, so sit tight for that. To kick things off for us right here at the G3 biannual meeting, let's take a look at some of the great things G3 has been working on since we last met.
a whole lot of road covered thus far in 2021. And now it's time for us to jump into the driver's seat. Ladies and gents, please welcome our co-chairs of Guam Green Growth. Up first, the governor of Guam, the Honorable Lou Leon Guerrero. Thank you, Kyle. I just wanted to say half a day and thank you so much uh, for joining us here today for the Guam Green Girl Biannual Meeting, of course, co-chaired by uh, the Lieutenant Governor Josh Denor and of course, Austin Selton. And as we have seen, we have uh, gone through some of the things that have been done uh, since we last met. And I think it's so many uh, successful projects. I'm very thankful for all the people that have done that. Um, we are continuously working for a sustainable, equitable, and prosperous future. And after extensive planning, we finally formally adopted the G3 Action Framework one year ago, of course, as we know, in September 20. Um, the framework became our island's most comprehensive action plan ever created to achieve our sustainable future. And here we are in 2021, and I am so proud of all the hard work that we have been doing to help us get closer to that future. Today, we have begun to diversify and strengthen our economy. We are working to have more local nutritious food with aquaculture and agriculture programs. We have made progress on the path to renewable energy and our people are making more energy efficient choices. People are beginning to understand the importance of circular economy, and we are taking the steps to get there. We have continued to cultivate partnerships throughout the world that will benefit our people and our mission, including recommitting to the Micronesia Challenge with expanded goals of effectively managing 50% of marine and 30% of terrestrial resources by 2030. The local 2030 Islands Network, which we are a member, actually a founding member, the Global Island Partnership, and the National Climate Strong Islands Network, who just had their membership gathering last week, where in my keynote speech, I made it very clear that Guam is in this for the long haul. We started a local, uh, we started as a local initiative, and now we are emerging as a global leader and island, in island sustainability, where we are inspiring others all around the world, and more importantly, helping by example and leading. The hard work and the teamwork that this group has done has brought agencies, educational institutions, mayoral offices, businesses, legislators, nonprofits, and youth members together to collaborate on our goals and solutions for our people. If you haven't already, make sure to take a look at the G3 Action Framework and the dashboard on guamgreengrowth.org to see how our progress is stacking up. I am so proud of everyone involved in the G3 Working Group and the G3 Action Framework and all the G3 implementation projects that have come out of this process in the past two years. You are all leaders we need right now. And I appreciate all the work you continue to put in. While so much has changed in the past two years, one thing is still the same. And that is our dedication and commitment to a greener and more sustainable Guam. And before I end, I would just like to especially shout out, put a shout out to Austin Shelton. Um, I think with Austin's commitment, Austin's persistence, Austin's re resourcefulness, uh, we would not be where we are today leading everybody. And of course, uh, with his co-chair, Josh Tenorium. I think this team is a perfect fit for what we want to do in sustainability. I'll tell you, I was at a meeting uh, with the Department of uh, no, the DOI, it was the Department of Interior. And um, there's a woman there by the name of Bertha Hill Hiddlebrand. And she has been uh, designated from DOI to be the climate change coordinator. And I started explaining to her all the things that we have been doing. 
and of course gave Austin a great shout out. And she told us that of all the territories and even the nation, we are far, far ahead from everyone. And so that is something I think that is uh, very honorable and I'm so proud of the work of this team. And most importantly, I am also very uh, thankful for the dashboard because as you know, when we go and do goals and accomplish goals and objectives, it's always really good to see where we're at. And this is what the dashboard does for us. It's metrics that we are looking at to see how we are and where we're at in our process for accomplishing our uh, goals and objectives. So um, I'm very uh, proud to be part of this team and very honored and again, Thank you to Josh and Austin for keeping everybody on track. And thank you all of you for being part of this, I think, great organization to move our island forward and to protect our resources and to provide for our children and their children. Thank you, Mrs. Masi. Much, Gov, and uh, we'll let you get back. Like, I know you're super, super busy. You got a whole island to run. We appreciate your time this morning for sure. Up next, we'd like to welcome Thank our co chair. I'm in the good hands of Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. All right. Very cool. Thank you, madam. Up next, we've got the president of the University of Guam, our co chair. Ladies and gents, please welcome Dr. Thomas Christ. Top of day, and thank you. And uh, I, I echo the governor's uh, shout out to Austin and to everyone participating in this important and really um, uh, path-breaking effort of the Guam Green Growth Initiative. So, and thanks everybody for joining for today. And of course, I'm I'm honored to be co-chairing uh, the the second uh, Guam Green Growth Biannual Meeting with Governor Lulian Guerrero. And uh, when I first arrived on the island in 2018 and was welcomed into the community, I quickly found out that Guam was really like no, no other place. And, and uh, the governor's comments about how well we're doing and how far ahead we are is an indication of that. But uh, in addition to those kinds of things, we, we also have a beautiful island. Our food is amazing, but what really makes us different is the people. And so the our, our island's people care about this place more than most people care about their places. So this love and pride for the island that our people have has given life to this green, Guam Green Growth Initiative. And as the governor points out, the world is taking notice. This year, the University of Guam was selected out of hundreds of colleges and universities to win a 2021 Excellence and in Innovation Award from the American Association of Colleges and uh, State Colleges and Universities, which is the National Association for Public Universities. This award um, is for the accomplishments of the Guam Green Growth Initiative, the G3 Initiative. So I wanna thank everyone who has had a hand in making this program so successful so far, which of course includes the Center for Island Sustainability, the Working Group, the Steering Committee, and thanks especially to our co-chairs, uh, 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 Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio and Director of the CIS Austin Shelton. Um, so the so the steering committee and, and the co-chairs, and then all of our community supporters and volunteers in this effort. So thank you to everyone who's helped with the implementation projects like the G3 Community Garden, the Aquaculture Program, the G3 Conservation Corps, the G3 Circular Economy, Makerspace and Innovation Hub at Chamorro Village. So all of those efforts are really amazing and, and, and a great example to the world. So please know that you can continue to count on the University of Guam as your partner to achieve the ambitious G3 Action Framework Goals. Our mission at UOG, as most everyone here knows, is Ina Descubre Setpi, to enlighten, to discover, and to serve. And achieving the ambitious goals of G3 will take all three of those. We look forward to doing all we can to continue supporting this important effort. Situts Masi, and thank you. Biba UOG and Biba G3. Biba, thank you so much, Dr. Christ. Beautiful view from your office, sir. Ladies and gents, as we continue now, we'd like to welcome our G3 Steering Committee co-chairs. Up first, the Lieutenant Governor of Guam, the Honorable Joshua Tenorio. Off today, everybody, and I too want to thank all of you for being here today and agreeing to be an agent or an effector of positive change for the people of Guam. Most especially, I want to thank 
uh, the members of the steering committee and the, the various focus areas for taking what could easily have been an initiative that was passed off as just another work assignment and instead putting your hearts and your passion into our island to make it a better place. It is that passion for Guam Green Growth and everything we see that can be done that fuels this. Right now, our goals and the spirit of sustainability are worldwide causes. And with the new leadership in Washington and the Biden administration and the US Congress, I'm optimistic that our G3 movement will ensure that Guam is ready to pursue opportunities to advance our collective efforts towards a sustainable future. We're working together with groups all over the planet who are ready to get things done. And I'd like to take a special opportunity to thank Kate Brown, Kate Brown from GLISPA or the Global Island Partnership and Celeste Connors from the Hawaii Green Growth and Local 2030 Hub for being here to provide some global updates in just a few minutes. On all levels, sustainable development, development is garnering support like never before. We're working together here on our island. We are working together with the federal government and we're working with islands from throughout the globe and with the United Nations to truly take commitments and action. This includes most recently a new $274,000 grant to the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability in partnership with the Guam Energy Office to develop a Guam strategic energy and action plan for our island. This plan of action will enable future funding opportunities that seek to advance energy initiatives, both in the public and the nonprofit sector. Working together across our, our private and public sectors is going to take us, help take, a, take advantage of opportunities that would not exist otherwise. And certainly our island does need opportunities. I wanna thank the members of the steering committee who work hard to keep their eyes on the prize as they improve our efficiency and productivity in all kinds of arenas, in energy, transportation, economic diversification, and more programs to help the members of our community who are the most vulnerable and have the most needs, education, workforce development, and more. Please continue to show your passion for these goals and please continue to put into your hearts our future. Through your hard work, Guam Green Growth is not just an initiative anymore. It is a movement and we will continue moving forward. Thank you and don't clue Nesitus Masi. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much. We'll continue now by welcoming our uh, co-chair for the steering committee here at Guam Green Growth. He's also the director for the UOG Center for Island Sustainability and UOG Seagrad. I too would like to make a shout out to Austin Shelton. <laughs> Happy day, everybody. Uh, thank you, Governor Leon Guerrero, Lieutenant Governor Tenorio, President Christ, uh, for your remarks. Uh, Governor, I just wanted to, to say thank you for um, your first shout out there. You're, you're really too kind. And I would um, just like to say thank you to you for your leadership and the Lieutenant Governor and um, our, our president here at the University of Guam for making all these things possible with your support to make G3 happen. And I would also really like to express my deep gratitude for all the G3 working group members um, and our community partners who are implementing these G3 actions on the ground. Uh, without all of the willing partners, these things would not be possible. So, so thank you to our leaders and thank you to all of the people on the ground who are doing the hard work of making G3 possible. And uh, especially to my team here at the Center for Island Sustainability that you see um, quite often out in all of our different activities. Uh, so with that, uh, with that gratitude, I'd like to uh, begin my update for today to share some progress on our G3 implementation projects with you. Now, as an island that imports over 90% of all the food and goods we consume, we are particularly vulnerable to global turmoil and disruptions in supply chains. Last month, we kicked off a new partnership with Guahan Sustainable Culture, the Guam Legislature, Legislature and the Sir Guam Commission's Guam, uh, Guahan Sustainable Culture AmeriCorps. We held a ground raising ceremony right in the heart of our capital village of Hagatnya. The garden is now fully active with volunteers there almost every weekday afternoon. It serves as a beacon of education and production to inspire local food security. We look forward to this model spreading through our other villages. We are also making progress on a new aquaculture program. In August, we held an aquaculture showcase and fish fry at Adaloop to share the first harvest of tilapia 
from our UOGC grant aquaponics system. This kicks off a new village aquaponics program in partnership with the University of Guam and University of Hawaii Sea Grant programs. Training has started with mayor's offices and community groups who will run the aquaponics systems. Soon we'll be installing five of these units throughout the island in the coming months. We'll also soon have 23 new recycling bins and 50 waste bins arrive on the island to install in mayor's offices and public parks to support island beautification efforts. Fabrication of the bins was just completed in Saipan through a partnership with the Micronesia Islands Nature Alliance who created a similar program in the CNMI. The bins will be shipped here to Guam shortly with the help of Matson, and then our partner iRecycle will manage the bins ensuring that our local schools benefit from the aluminum and metal redemptions. In accordance with public law 35-130 in January uh, 2022, the full plastic bag ban will go into effect and in July 2022, paper bags will also be phased out at local retailers. Thank you to uh, Senator Regine Visco Lee, one of our working group members who uh, authored this legislation. Partnering with the Guam EPA, G3 is preparing to launch an in-store and public service campaign to get the word out and to encourage our people to start going green now by bringing their reusable bags. We will work to promote a smooth transition next year. Earlier this week, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, we learned that our team was selected for a Department of Interior Energizing Insular Areas Grant Award uh, together with the Guam Energy Office. And now we'll be able to lead the development of a plan to create our island's roadmap to 100% renewable energy by 2045 in order to meet the ambitious mandate of public law 35-46 that Governor Leon Guerrero signed into law in 2019. Now we are just about ready to open the doors to the Guam Green Growth Circular Economy Makerspace and Innovation Hub, where local entrepreneurs, artists, and creators will have access to business development programs, tools, and machinery. They'll be able to transform discarded lumber, plastics, metals into new marketable products using 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC routers, and other tools. We are excited to stimulate new green industries through the Makerspace and Innovation Hub, through our partnerships with the Guam National Science Foundation, EPSCOR, Guam Economic Development Authority, the UOG School of Business and Public Administration, and Guam Unique Merchandise and Art. In June of this year, we launched the G3 Conservation Corps in partnership with the UOG Global Learning and Engagement Program. It is a workforce development program to prepare our community for the emerging green economy. The core members are training full-time on a variety of sustainability topics, agriculture, aquaculture, invasive species removal, reforestation, renewable energy, energy efficiency. And they're also doing tremendous work in island beautification in partnership with the Island Beautification Task Force, Mayor's Council, the Guam Visitors Bureau, the Conservation Corps, have been going to a new village every Friday. Now, to give you an idea of their impact so far, they've collected 481 large trash bags, 106 large items like tires, mattresses, refrigerators. They diverted 47,000 aluminum cans from the landfill and into the recycling stream, planted nearly 3,000 trees, and installed 420 solar panels on a public high school just this week and last week and they haven't been doing it alone. Along the way, they've been engaging our community. So far, 3,970 volunteer hours have been contributed to these island transformation efforts. Stay tuned for the final impact tallies during graduation in November and the announcement for the recruitment period of our next cohort. Thank you to our financial supporters for making all of this work possible. The governor and Lieutenant Governor of Guam, the Guam Legislature, the National Science Foundation, EPSCOR, and includes Seas Island Alliance programs, the Guam Economic Development Authority, and UOG Sea Grant. You'll hear more about our G3 dashboard updates and the G3 commitment program from Lauren and Anania later in the program today. Now, before our next speakers are introduced, we'd like to debut a special short video, just one of several in the making with our partner, Nihi, to introduce you to the members of the first cohort of the G3 Conservation Corps. Oh. 
Mafia, everybody, and welcome to the University of Guam, most especially welcome to the first day of the Guam Green Growth Conservation Corps. Guam Green Growth is our island's most comprehensive public-private partnership ever created to achieve a sustainable future. The Guam Green Growth Conservation Corps is a workforce development program preparing our community for the emerging green economy. Half a day, my name is Abby Crane. Daniel Stone Jr. Lucy Rasau. Claudia. Inan Yusinkai Taitno. Kevin Wong. Madeline Bradley. Jackie Jones. My name is Chelsea Certeza. Annie Dennis Nicholas Daly. Alana Chargloff. I'm from the village of Inalahan. I am newly arrived in Guam. I'm from Bali, Indonesia. I'm Palau. I'm from Palau. I grew up in the village of Pidi, migrated to Mong Mong, lived in Jigo, moved to Dedodo, now living in the village of Garagada. And I'm a student. I was actually a teacher at Guam Community College. Recently was a youth development assistant for Sanctuary. I'm a small business owner. Yeah, I'm a, one of the island's artists. After graduating, I saw the master's program here at School Safnar, and I thought this would be a pretty good bridge, being a conservation about agriculture, agriculture, all sorts. Yeah. We stress to our you want it? sanctuary that he wants to be good stewards of the land, you know, and plan to take the skills and the knowledge that they learned from yeah. here and educate the youth. I applied specifically for this program because I'm already a part of the conservation world, and I do believe that Guam needs to learn to sustain itself. I look forward to learning more about uh, sustainability outside of recycling. I'm excited to learn about island waste and how much we really produce as an island and what we can do to lower that. I usually do beach cleanups, just go grab a bag of trash and go clean up. So it's going to be fun as well. Just getting to do it with people is going to be better. The one thing that really caught my attention was actually the energy audits. They're sucking up so much unnecessary power. I'm, I'm excited to learn about how we can recycle and use our natural resources here first and locally so we can have more of a circular economy start developing. We live in a place where a lot of what we need to carry out our everyday lives is imported. And if you feel you need something and you're going to grab it, you're going to consume it, and there's always waste, there's always cost. Um, and a lot of people forget what that cost is to the environment, what that cost is to our society. Sustainability is important because we are really given limited resources. We don't know how long these resources are gonna last. And so we should make the most out of what we're given and uh, continue the full circle. Right now is a great opportunity to build a sense of responsibility within our community. You know, everything in this in this planet is a chain reaction. One thing always affects another thing. What can I do to fulfill my sense of responsibility, you know, and, you know, share that knowledge with someone, make other people aware, lead by example. That's the kind of human being that I'm still striving to be in a day-to-day -day basis. An amazing group and their work isn't done yet. Stay tuned and don't forget to check out our website, guamgreengrowth.org and stay updated on some of the great things they've got going on throughout the island. We have such a great team here at Guam Green Growth and our team has the honor of working with other great teams from all around the world. Right now, I'd like to welcome members of our partner organizations for updates. First, Executive Director of Hawaii Green Growth and Local 2030 Hub, Ms. Celeste Connors. Aloha and half a day. Um, wow. I am just blown away by the um, progress and action that's taken place since our last meeting. Um, I'm delighted to be here today, so mahalo and, and thank you very much. So aloha from Hawaii. And I actually think I'll be joined today with some of our updates with my colleague, Kate Brown, the Executive Director of the Global Island Partnership, as we'll be providing some local 2030 Island Network Secretariat updates. Um, however, before I hand it over to Kate, I just want to reiterate how delighted we are to see um, all the progress from community engagement to tangible actions to um, legislation and to see this really um, unprecedented coherence against all sectors of uh, society there in Guam. So congratulations. Um, really look forward to providing some updates and discuss next steps. Uh, so with that, I'd like to hand it over to uh, my colleague, Kate. 
Hi, um, and wow, yeah, I agree with Celeste. That was amazing. And I think what's unique about what Guam is doing, it's just really fast mobilization of lots of different groups of people around quite complex subjects, but in a way that's very tangible to local people because you're actually doing things um, on the ground. So I think it's inspiring for us. It's inspiring um, in many of the islands of the world. And it's a good segue into talking about um, what we're the local 2030 islands network which guam is a founding member and a very um, strong member in fact uh, the lieutenant uh, the governor of guam um, has been really a champion of local 2030 island network things at the international level so we've been engaging both with the governor lieutenant governor and others from guam green growth in um, sharing kind of the good news of Guam, but also inspiring others and learning from others. So it's, you know, it's a, a island process of learning from each other, sharing, appreciating these things we don't know how to do and um, kind of moving from there. Um, I think we have some slides that will help us go through this if we put those up. Um, and just to remind everyone, um, this network was founded two years ago, and we're really here giving updates um, on the network. If we move to the next slide, we like to show this slide because it reminds us that the, this new network is formed on top of some other learnings that um, all of us collectively have had, including from the Micronesia Challenge, the Caribbean Challenge Initiative, um, and other, the Aloha Plus Challenge, the best challenge all over the world. Um, islands working very much on the political leadership side of things, focused more on um, initially conservation and sustainable livelihoods and transitioning now into this bigger sustainability climate action um, issue. If we move to the next slide, uh, basically as an island driven network, we um, support island economies in achieving four principles. So everyone that's in the network now agrees that they are, these principles are what they're going to work through. And you'll see a little bit what Guam has done um, through this lens, you can see that. Uh, the first principle is really about the strengthening long-term political leadership on sustainable development and climate resilience. And obviously you have that in Guam. Um, scaling up public-private partnerships. So something like Guam Green Growth, um, which was referenced by Austin as a public-private partnership is Guam's um, way that you're doing that. So really trying to bring the support, the diverse stakeholders in integrating your own locally and culturally appropriate sustainability priorities into your policy and planning. Um, and there's a connection obviously to the international level through the sustainable development goals, but the goals that you're developing locally are your own goals. And the third pillar is on measuring SDG progress. And again, congratulations to Guam on actually having um, their own local dashboard in place to do that. And then on, and then the fourth is in implementing concrete initiatives. And we see that with the maker space or with the conservation core. Um, and then since we launched in, and since we last talked to you in April, we have a couple of really big updates and I'm gonna to pass to Celeste for the next one and ask that we move the slide on. Yeah, thanks Kate. This is actually really exciting um, since uh, we last met and spoke with this group that in April, the United States actually pledged support for the local 2030 Islands Network, the US government at the 2021 Earth Day Leaders Summit chaired by President Biden. And this was committing to support a net zero transition and to build climate resilience in island economies. And this included announcement by Special Envoy for Climate Change, John Kerry, that the U.S. federal government through key U.S. agencies will support the local 2030 Islands Network. So to break this down a little bit further, this is a partnership with the U.S. Department of State, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, the Department of Energy, including the U.S. Agency for International Development, uh, excuse me, NREL, our National New Renewable Energy Lab, and the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID will all support um, advancing these locally driven uh, climate efforts, including climate information, knowledge and data and decision support tools in ongoing and emerging sustainability and resilience activities in island regions. Um, so part of this I mentioned is the US Department of Energy as a partner, including the US National Renewable Energy Laboratory or NREL, 
and their low emissions development strategies global partnerships or LEDs GP um, we're actually taking inspiration from this really successful model which actually worked to provide technical assistance and peer learning support through what they called communities of practice. So now we're working with NRL to develop a specific community of practice approach um, inspired by LEDs GP for the local 2030 Islands network. Now the local 2030 Island net, uh, network will shortly announce these topic specific communities of practice in which member islands can participate and then having identified a specific area, receive that technical support from U.S. federal agencies in a peer-to-peer -peer way. These communities of practice support the implementation of the four pillars that Kate mentioned, and the topics will be determined by the island members through an iterative peer-to-peer -peer process. So the first two communities of practice will be one focused on resilience and clean energy systems led by NREL. And there will be a second community of practice on dashboard and data. So the dashboard and data community of practice, which will be led by the Hawaii Local 2030 Hub. And we'll also be partnering, we anticipate with um, G3, with the Guang Green Growth Team on that, being leaders in the community of practice around the dashboard and data, given your recent experience. So um, I think I'll have this back over to Kate, but I think I do want to say something I think that's significant about the announcement that she's um, going to talk about of really putting islands forward. So Kate, I'll hand that back over to you. Yeah, so I think um, really just another highlight is that the network was also able to bring and together and convene its network members at a very high level during um, the United Nations High Level Political Forum, um, which we had a event hosted by, uh, co-hosted with the government of Ireland and really wanted to um, acknowledge uh, Governor Leon Guerrero's um, really inspiring um, remarks there, and we can share um, the video and the report out of that. But really the focus there was on talking about island solutions um, on partnerships, resiliency and green growth recovery. And the, the event really took note of the fact that islands and island partnerships will be the forerunners when it comes to building back better and that green growth recovery. So we discussed how islands inspire islands and that it's vital to create spaces like this to share knowledge, tools and skills. Um, actually, can we move the slide on one? Yes, this is our event. Um, and then, all, oh, back one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and this, um, and then those that participated, so you can see um, a very um, broad range of people, including leaders, other leaders from Micronesia. So we had a specific Micronesia challenge focused um, panel and then uh, US leaders and others, um, but really sharing um, kind of what their ideas, what their solutions and what they're inspired by in this island space. And with that being said, um, I think now a couple of years into this network and this year we've really been ramping up, but we have now members, including um, we are originally Guam, um, the Federated States of Micronesia, Ireland, Curacao, the Marshall Islands, Grenada, Guam, Ibiza, and um, the UN Foundation, and we have a few other um, partners. And so between now and sort of the end of next year, we're having a big outreach effort on kind of recruiting more islands into Local 2030 Islands Network, which we're really excited by. And I think um, members see this very much as an efficient platform for helping to engage uh, amongst and between islands to, spread knowledge and raise ambition. And I think uh, we can see that very much play out. And um, Celeste, over to you. And next slide. Yeah, as we switch the slides, I want to go back to what Kate said. I think this um, global Local 2030 Islands Network uh, is a real uh, innovation, a peer-to-peer -peer island um, learning from each other and focusing on SDG implementation. And going back to what I said earlier about um, Special Envoy for Climate Change Kerry's remarks at the climate summit, he was essentially saying for the US to put its best foot forward when engaging other islands and other island economies, it's to put its own islands forward. And that would be Hawaii and Guam and Puerto Rico. So I think it's really, um, we're at a inflection point. Um, this is really important to see islands as leaders 
uh, islands have been leading in this, and I think that was a great recognition. Now, on the dashboard, this will be familiar to you. Um, this is just another way that the Local 2030 Islands Network is supporting the development of island data um, analysis tools and dashboards through the technical assistance provided by um, the network, and that's principle three, that's measuring SDG progress. So I'm flagging this specific example from Hawaii. Um, Hawaii recently updated their food metrics with the latest data, as well as expanding on specific metrics, and these include child food insecurity, impacts of COVID on food insecurity, poverty rates, uh, minimum wage, uh, um, race and chronic illness by ethnicity and more. Uh, they also updated the social justice metrics or will be soon updating to look into um, women's issues more specifically on the number of women engaged in legislation, student violence and safety, voter participation by gender, college enrollment, um, income, annual average, extra time spent in household activities by women. And so these metrics correspond with Hawaii's local goals, the Aloha Plus Challenge goal of green workforce and education and smart sustainable communities, but also aligned with the SDG goals of poverty reduction or no poverty, SDG 1 and 5 of gender equality, um, reduced inequalities, peace and justice, and strong institutions and partnerships. So this is another example of how islands will each have their own locally and culturally appropriate version of one of the key deliverables for the network to help advance this. The, um, the network has actually signed an MOU with Esri to support local dashboards and data tools. And so through this dashboard and data community practice I mentioned, we hope and do expect Guam to play a significant lead role in an active role, and we hope to help create and uplift other islands' dashboards, learning from our own uh, experiences and best practices in order to increase transparency, accountability, and community engagement. Um, so let me hand it over to you, back over to you, Kate, sir, for some final reflections. Uh, yep. So I think we really wanted to just, you know, the network is a network, and we really wanted to acknowledge the efforts of Guam, both as thought leaders in our network. So um, Dr. Shelton is, um, we work very closely with him and others um, in uh, Guam and G3. Um, and then I think it's, it's been vital for, that leadership from Guam has been vital for the network to thrive along with um, that of other places. And we've really, I think, been counting on the governor, Lieutenant Governor to champion a lot of this at the international level. Um, very well, in fact, and um, including last week. And then we think that this critical um, partnership and working together in the events that we've participated in together, implementing the network principles, um, including the dashboard, as we heard, and the process of community engagement, as well as the local homegrown solutions is what really defines the network. Um, so Guam is showing exactly what the network is about. Um, and how we are going to build back better. And we think the island's makerspace, for example, as developed by Guam, will be of interest across the other islands in the network. And we will work with G3 on helping to share this approach among many others. And we really look forward to our continued partnership. I think, you know, just congratulations to you for everything you've done. Obviously, there's lots more to do. Um, and we've got many challenges to face, but um, Guam is an inspiration to me. And thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you so much, Celeste. And of course, Kate is uh, the executive director of the Global Island Partnership, one of the many amazing groups. And of course, uh, Hawaii Green Growth also represented uh, by Ms. Celeste. It's great to see the partnerships have truly helped to bring Guam Green Growth to the global stage. None of that would be possible without the amazing work that the G3 working groups, that's you, put into the process. Right now, we're going to take a closer look at the progress made amongst these working groups. And here to guide us through it all, please welcome G3 coordinator, Ms. Lord Sodell. Thank you, Kyle. Since January 2020, I've had the pleasure of working with the G3 Working Group on our G3 Action Framework Development, the categories of action, our data and public engagement, and working with our G3 Youth Ambassadors. The G3 Working Group has been meeting monthly in their category of action teams, further developing goals, objectives, action items, and metrics aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The working group team uh, co-chairs will be presenting their progress today in our 10-year journey in achieving the G3 goals. 
First, we'll hear from the Healthy and Prosperous Communities team co-chaired by Lola Leon Guerrero of the Bureau of Statistics and Plans and Melanie Mendiola of the Guam Economic Development Authority. Can you hear me? Go ahead, yes. Mel, we can. Okay, excellent. Today, I'm so sorry. I'm sitting, um, I'm between meetings right now, so I ran out to my car so I could get a quiet space. Um, so, uh, the my um, the healthy and property, Pro healthy and prosperous communities committee, led by fearless Lola Leongro and myself, um, uh, we're the, usually the first to present, which I mean, that's a good thing. And if we were going to give ourselves a grade, I think Lola and I would give ourselves, give our committee an A for all that we've accomplished since April of 2021. And so I'm gonna go ahead and run down the list and uh, Lola will chime in as she, um, as, as uh, if I, she'll chime in as well. So some of the results since April, 2021, as everyone is aware, well, I think to start with, I'd like to just kind of touch on there very broadly. What we're seeing as far as um, results since April, 2021 is massive cooperation across all um, government leadership. So what we're like government and private sector leadership. So what we're looking at is change from a policy perspective, change from um, a, the, the, at the agency level. So from our executive branches, et cetera, and then from the general public as well. So we're seeing a lot of great uh, movement and we're really happy to report. What we have seen since April, 2021 is of course, as we've continued to wage the ongoing battle with COVID-19, over 87% of Guam's eligible population is fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, in addition, public health continues to provide programs for expecting and breastfeeding mothers. Um, tobacco prevention programs are shifting um, to social media and community partnerships versus in-person delivery as a result of the you know, social gathering restrictions and whatnot. The Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center um, inpatient detox program opened on May 27th and construction of a residential treatment center for women started. Um, in addition, Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness began some mental health and substance abuse treatment for uh, the Department of Corrections um, inmates. And so these are things from the health perspective um, that, uh, that have been accomplished. From prosperous community, what we've been working towards is really building a diverse um, economy uh, by adding agriculture and aquaculture as a major industry, as establishing agriculture and aquaculture in a sustainable way um, on our island. So some of the things that have occurred since April of 2021, so prior to April 20, between the September and April reporting, we were happy to report that public health was buying produce from our local farmers. But since April of 2021, now the Department of Education is also purchasing local produce from our farmers. In addition, I had mentioned cooperation at all levels, including policy level. Um, we had uh, um, uh, Senator Clint Rigel um, introduce bills to criminalize crop theft. So this is a big problem for our farmers getting their crops stolen and there being really very little consequences for the, the perpetrators of the crime. And so since then, uh, Public Law 36-10 uh, was passed to criminalize crop theft in addition to PL 36-24, Public Law 36-24, uh, to create a bona fide buyer certificate program. And again, this is just, um, these are additional uh, safeguards in place so that we know our farmers and know where our food is coming from and knowing that they're coming from a farmer who has an established set of health and safety practices with regard to growing their food. Since then, uh, since April, Five new bills have been introduced to strengthen agriculture and aquaculture, again, by Senator Clint Rigel, and we're very grateful for his advocacy in this space. Over $3 million in grant funding has been awarded for local agricultural and aquaculture projects. And these include grants awarded to um, Tugira, the agency I come from, the Guam Economic Development Authority for um, a commercial um, aquaculture feasibility study um, to the Department of Ag as well um, for for their work as well as um, as well as one project that has to do with uh, farmer stress and helping farmers cope with the stresses of um, regulations as well as the stresses of selling and marketing their produce. Um, the uh, Farm to Table also received a grant for increasing workforce development, and Guahan Sustainable most recently um, received a grant as well. So over $3 million in grant funding awarded. We're very proud of all these organizations for seeking this, going after this funding, and getting awarded this funding. 
And um, of course, the G3 Circular Economy Makerspace and Innovation Innovative Hub, um, uh, this has been in the planning. Uh, Gita was a partner on this, and, um, and this has been, has been launched. Some of the expected results that we're, we hope to see in the next six months is um, we'd like to put in an application from a US EDA project, a Build Back Better um, regional project uh, in this aquaculture space. The Soil and Water Conservation District um, expects to, uh, to complete its long-range plan. In addition, um, there's some credentialing and uh, curriculum uh, that's being developed by the Department of Ag um, in conjunction with the University of Guam for uh, Chamal Land Trust Farmers, and that's still in process, but is expected to be kind of wrapping up by the next reporting period. Some things that are emerging, um, the, uh, the governor established, Governor Leon Guerrero established the Governor's Economic Diversification Working Group in conjunction with private sector partners. And um, in that is an aquaculture and agriculture subcommittee that will be undertaking a lot of the work. Uh, there's just certainly some overlapping work with this committee, but uh, really about pressing forward these industries in addition to other industries to promote a diverse um, economy. And some of the needs that we identified in accomplishing these goals um, were had to do with, well, obviously COVID-19 is still impacting the ability to carry out programs. And so um, it's, it's affected um, addressing obesity and the risk of chronic disease. It's affected working and, and some of the needs include working with the legislature um, for, I think it's uh, vaping, you know, the electronic nicotine delivery system um, to add that to the smoke-free public spaces, school-based tobacco prevention and outreach. Basically, COVID-19 is, is affecting the ability to deliver these um, programs in person. And so continuing to be innovative to try to deliver these programs um, uh, in other ways. And in, the, in addition, specific to agriculture and aquaculture, the need for more land, um, land and uh, space uh, for all of these programs to be carried out. I think all of the organizations um, that uh, take part in these, in, in these projects, whether they be the Department of Ag or a nonprofit, even our farmers co-op, um, to be able to grow your produce, sell your produce, um, and as well as your fish and, and aquaculture type projects, would certainly be helped by additional resources in the land space, as land is kind of scarce on our island, and uh, and so this would be very helpful. This was identified to be very helpful. Ms. Lola, did you want to plug in anything? I, you know, the only thing, uh, just to mention for additional information with Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center, so they did get DOI funding, CIP, for uh, the renovation and repair at the Talafovo Cottage Homes. And then they also received a supplemental uh, funding uh, from DOI as well under CIP for the construction for the New Beginnings Drug and Alcohol Building Facilities. And that's spot out. Thank you, Mel. All right, that's all we have. Over to you, Lauren. Thank you, Lola and Mel. Now we, oops, sorry, sorry. Mic check one, two. Okay, thank you, Lola and Mel. Now we will hear from the educated, capable, and compassionate island team, co-chaired by Dr. Mary Okada of Guam Community College, the Honorable Regine Bisco Lee, and Melanie Brennan from the Department of Youth Affairs. Buenas and half a day, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Lauren, and thank you to the Gov, the Lieutenant Gov, all the chairs and co-chairs of all the different committees. It's great to see and hear from everybody this morning. Um, and I also wanna thank my co-chairs for their leadership. Obviously the fearless Dr. Mary Okada from GCC, who is unable, unfortunately, to join us today. And our co-chair co director, Lonnie Brennan from DOIA. Hi, Lonnie. Um, and yeah. we also just want to shout out our educated and capable and compassionate island team members who are joining us today and thank them for all their work. Uh, we have a ton of highlights uh, to share with you and some of those results include uh, distance education, service learning, remote access. Um, we've been working on increasing network capacity, so supporting IT infrastructure, workforce development with Project U, our summer youth intern and employment and many other programs, um, as well as 
our reduction in violence through effective addressing of referrals. So again, thank you to DOIA, CPS, and all the partners who've made that incredible highlight happen. Um, we also have a number of expected results. Um, so those are our continued monthly meetings with our all-star team. Um, we're expecting additional federal funding, education for targets, um, continued federal funding for our NGO services, as well as an expected DYA case management system. Um, and right now I'll turn it over to my co-chair, Director Brennan, for um, information about emerging opportunities. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, and so we do have, uh, we've encountered so many opportunities. And one of the highlights is 36.9 million in funding from the governor's education stabilization funds. Um, and that's for mostly for children. And we're expecting a listing soon with the descriptions of all those projects. So we'll be able to report more um, next quarter. Additionally, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, there's a grant funding opportunity for curriculum development in 2023. Um, additionally, environmental sustainability and carbon offset as a result of our private, um, our public and private partnerships, as well as career, the Guam Department of Labor has applied for the comprehensive and accessible reemployment through recovery um, from the National Dislocated Workers Grant Program. Additionally, we are developing a climate core, a climate core to increase our work on climate, um, climate and sustainability and resilience, as well as the development of our Guam One Stop Data Village. It's in its proposal phase with vendors to build the island's infrastructure. Obviously, well, our, okay, go ahead, Senator. Okay. Um, no, just moving on to our needs. So we had a ton of stuff that we were able to accomplish, things that we see on the horizon, but there's definitely um, a gap in some of those um, issue areas. And we definitely need more policy development, more support for legislation that will help us for sustainable facilities and a number of other programs. Um, we need help with a data warehouse as well as establishing tech literacy for workforce development and more community support for these sustainable practices. And I think that the educated, capable and compassionate island section really touches on so many different sustainable development goals. Um, it's really exciting stuff. I wanna echo the message from previous speakers about checking out the dashboard and the action framework because we have so much going on and we can always use extra hands. So if you're interested in helping out with our team, please contact myself, our co-chairs or Lauren. Um, and we really just wanna thank you so much everyone for your time, your attention, for joining us today and especially for your action. Anything else, Ani? I think you covered everything. Thanks everyone and we'll turn it back to Lauren. Thank you, Senator Bisco Lee and Lonnie. Next, we will hear from the Sustainable Homes, Utilities and Transportation Team, co-chaired by Vince Ariola of the Guam Department of Public Works, Brent Weesey of the Guam Building Code Council, and Rebecca Respicio of the Guam Energy Office. Hi, thank you so much, Lauren. And um, again, I just wanna say half day and good morning to everybody from the top all the way, um, everybody that's involved. Um, so, here, let's see, our slide should be popping up. Okay, good. So some of the results that we just wanted to highlight um, since the report of April 2021 is that um, BPW is of course continuing to work on hiring an MS4 administra administrator. Um, that is a municipal separate storm sewer system administrator. Um, it is a brand new position within the government of Guam, but it's something that is really going to add value to the services that we can provide. Um, additional public outreach efforts on the importance of stormwater drains is ongoing. Um, government agencies have been receiving training on the new and updated building codes. Um, we've weatherized, the Guam Energy Office has weatherized about 22 homes since the last reporting period. Um, I'm happy to report and share the sentiments of what's previously been announced that 
UOG was awarded the grant to um, work with us and, and the Guam Energy Office for the Guam Strategic Energy Plan because it has not been updated since 2013. So we're really excited about that. Um, there's also currently a draft executive order from the governor that um, is going to help establish an electric vehicle task force. And that's um, to aim towards having the government of Guam vehicle fleet uh, turn into, or eventually transition into electric vehicles. That, that's super exciting. Um, we also would like to report that the four, four private schools that were recipients of the Energy Smart Schools program did complete their energy audits um, through GPA and the Siemens uh, Corporation. So we're happy to report that on November 17, we will be having a virtual conference open to all of the schools um, to talk about the energy, energy management plans that have been developed for these four schools and to also share with the other schools how they can develop their energy management plan. Um, Vince has shared that DBW does have the billboard design that was designed by their interns through the DYA and GDA, GDOE program over the summer. And finally, GRT received some funding to update the strategic transportation plan. Some expected results by April 2022 is hopefully we'll have that MS4 administrator on board. Um, we're also happy to report that the building permit center is going green. So it's currently under review. Um, by the AG's office to, to establish a digital online process, which is going to help, you know, save with some paper and, and add for a greener Guam. Um, we hope to have more homes weatherized. We are currently weatherizing Ironwood Estates up in Gerido. And why that's important is that we got approval by USDOE to be able to switch out their, um, um, their air conditioning systems are the central units and so those are energy sucking and we got approval to pull that out and give them some split units so we're really happy about that we're also hoping that by april the energy electric vehicle task force will be implemented um, we'll report about the outcomes on our on the energy smart schools virtual conference by then um, let's see Oh, uh, Vince should have been completed working with GDOE Federal Programs Office to hopefully fully fund the uh, billboards for the anti litter campaign. GRTA will hire a consultant to lead the updating of the strategic transportation plan. And super exciting, self about to says that um, the mobility on demand for a public transportation app is should be should be up and running, hopefully. Um, and that's basically like an Uber an Uber type um, response for trans public transportation. Some emerging opportunities is of course, we're going to research de developing and sustainable practices for road repair and road construction. Um, Vince talked about, and, and Brent talked about um, using grinded up glass uh, when they're building the roadways because it's really essentially sand. And then we also are reviewing the possibility of maybe um, reusing some plastics to fill in potholes, but there's a whole science behind that, but we're gonna start researching that um, more. Um, we're happy to report that there is current legislation that is in Bill 19836 to actually transfer some property up in Daddy Doe to GRTA for um, use of a park and ride um, parking lot, basically to encourage everybody to start carpooling, which will help with um, you know, our, our community and our environment. We also will continue the research for funding to put charging stations around the island. Some needs in accomplishing our goals, of course, as usual, funding for unfunded mandates, um, more qualified personnel, uh, compensated at competitive salaries, and like sharing the sentiments of those reporting before us, stiffer penalties for non-compliance, illegal dumping and disposal, et cetera. Finally, um, what we're going to do is continue to follow up because I know that in the last reporting period, GRTA had said that they were in the process, in the procurement process for purchasing 10 electric buses. Unfortunately, that's a delay um, because there is a shortage of microchips. I think it's across the board in vehicles as well uh, on the island. And Sal Babata did say it could take up to a year. So we're just hoping to continue to follow up actively and try to get that moving along.
So um, that's our report. Lauren, thank you so much for your guidance and thank you everybody. Thank you, Vince, Brent, and Rebecca. And now we will hear from the Thriving Natural Resources team, co-chaired by Evangie Lujan of the Guam Waterworks Authority and Fran Castro of the UOG Sea Grant Program. Hello, day, everyone. We are the Thriving Natural Resources Committee. Um, we work on climate action, life below water, and life on land. And our group is comprised of uh, natural resource agencies, nonprofits, and youth groups. Um, I want to first thank those that have continually engaged in our working group and providing updates for our report today. So Vanjie and I are going to tag team in this report, and I will now just introduce Vanjie to proceed. Thank you so much, Fran. I too am in the middle of meeting and taking this call from my car, which I think is going to be like the new trend. So uh, since the we've done a lot of things since April of 2021. One of them is that uh, we have new members. The North and South Soil Conservation Districts are now part of our group. Um, the 2020-2030 Guam Forest Action Plan is now completed. The Guam Forest Plan should be completed and submitted to the governor by November. The Habitat Conservation Plan, which addresses all types of um, endangered species, that's expected to be completed by 2023, but we have started the um, stakeholder meetings. Uh, Department of Agriculture has led in the fisheries management plan and it is currently being developed. There's a contract out for the Manel Gayas watershed plan and uh, BSB had received a grant to start the development of the Guam sustainability plan. That particular plan will now serve as a master plan for Guam and it is expected to start um, the process of organizing the, the scope of work on October 1st. Finally, uh, the first cohort of citizen for, uh, foresters, which are about 16 people that volunteered, have in, inventoried 280 trees around the island of Guam. So hopefully by next year in April 2022, the vulnerability assessment for climate change will be completed. The fisheries management plan should be completed. We have just initiated the work for addressing um, flooding in GIGO using nature-based solutions with the School of Engineering and the GIGO Municipal Planning Council. We're hoping to have the installation of that solution in by next year as well. We have received some funding for stipends for community members to protect reforested areas from fires and also to help plant trees. Right now, uh, we're starting the project to use bamboo as a bio charcoal. What this will do is enable the bamboo issue down in the south, the, those bamboo to be utilized for something important uh, such as soil, soil amendment. And so if that is successful, um, we're hoping that that uh, biocharcoal can be something of an industry for the rest of Guam, uh, something to enhance the soils that are being, um, and just uh, um, the soils that are impacted by burning and different types of things like that. And finally, uh, the Micronesia Challenge Sustainable Financing Plan has started its update and we hope to have the results by next year. Some of our emerging opportunities is that we were very fortunate and thank you so much, Governor, for giving us the funding to hire a Micronesian Challenge Coordinator. That person will be housed with uh, the University of Guam Island Sustainability Office. They will be working on the climate change strategy as well as develop a climate change credit program for reforestation. They'll also be helping us in the, our um, Thriving Natural Resources G3 working group, collecting the data and making sure that we're on time for all of our projects. In addition, we're really working to have within the School of Engineering here at the University of Guam, green infrastructure as part of all of their senior projects. We have the opportunity as well to get um, hazard mitigation funds to address watershed activities, as well as use invasive species as part um, of a product in the circular economy. As mentioned by many groups, there's a lot of issues that we need to achieve our goals, um, funding, policies, monitoring. And as one of the other groups mentioned, a list of properties that can be used for conservation and most importantly, developing our human capacity to implement all the projects. So um, back to you, Fran. 
Okay, so just some challenges uh, that we've been talking about, like everyone else, funding is always critical for our projects. Um, but our group is working diligently to apply for grants so that we can continue to move toward um, our goals. Uh, the next one, uh, in terms of boards, we discovered at our last meeting that the Department of Agriculture's boards for agriculture, ocean, and fisheries have not been appointed, and they do have some updates to their regulations that need to be approved, and they haven't been able to move forward with that. Um, there are also some actions in the fisheries realm that are inhibiting um, them moving forward with like doing things like fishing licenses uh, because of outside entities and their regulations that supersede ours. Um, the next bullet, um, we need regulations to strengthen uh, we need regulations to be strengthened um, so that we can avoid situations like the one in Marble Cape. Currently, Guam does not have stormwater and fire damage uh, regulations, which are key to properly enforcing um, such activities. And we hope to further engage the relevant agencies to address this challenge uh, to our working group. And then the last one, um, the youth are doing amazing work and very passionate about the work that we do. Uh, and they really are the voice uh, of our future, so we need to kind of pay attention to them. Um, and they had requested um, for support to define their role in G3. Um, they had expressed before their disconnection with agencies and the ongoing work, and so I think they want to be more involved. And I want to thank um, Kyle Dahilik for bringing this up to us and for all his efforts to motivate the youth of Guam. And we hope we can continue to engage them in all aspects of G3. Um, so I think that's all I have for challenges. Thank you so much. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Thank you, Vanjie and Fran. Next, we will hear from the Sustainable Alliances team co-chaired by Melvin Wampat Borja of the Commission on Decolonization and the Department of Chamorro Affairs the Honorable Melissa Savaris, Mayor of Dededo, and Trina Leberer of the Nature Conservancy, oh, and Trina Leberer of the Nature Conservancy Pacific Division. Kapiti. Oh, awesome, you have it. Okay. Um, our uh, results for April 2021 uh, include substantive engagement with the Biden administration, the United Nations, and island partners regarding three specific actions. One is the UN Special Rapporteur's letter. There were three separate rapporteur filings with the United Nations regarding um, or citing alleged human rights violations in association with uh, the military buildup. Uh, this is really just a mechanism to increase our ability to regulate, mitigate, and uh, address the impacts of construction on all aspects of the life on Guam, whether it be cultural impact, environmental impacts, and the like. Um, the letters were sent from the United Nations to the Biden administration, and Governor Leon Guerrero followed up uh, on that filing. We also cited it on the record with the United Nations uh, in our testimony before the UN uh, Committee on the 24, which is the uh, Committee on Decolonization. Uh, we also have on record our request, our continuing request for a UN visiting mission to Guam. And uh, I'm happy to report that Guam will be participating in the 2022 Our Ocean Conference hosted by Palau. Um, we uh, also completed our Sustainable Alliance metrics in collaboration with CIS OTEC um, for the dashboard tracking. Um, we are, for our expected results, um, the, now that we are on the record with the C24, uh, the Lieutenant Governor and myself will be traveling to the UN uh, to present in, before the fourth committee. And so, this is part of the process at the UN. Um, the testimony on the C24 level helps to produce the draft resolution for the UN for the year. And then it is uh, adopted by the fourth committee. So our presence at the UN fourth committee is critical to ensure that the language that supports the effort on Guam is uh, adopted and recognized on an international level. 
Uh, we are also working on uh, producing the draft International Organizations Engagement Report, which is uh, an effort to try to align all of our efforts, uh, local efforts in regards to our international, uh, regional and federal negotiations and communications. Um, as you all know, our unincorporated territory status uh, really imposes a very kind of different approach in the way that we engage uh, partners and contemporaries and peers around the region and uh, intergovernment. Um, we are also working on uh, the regional solidarity statement uh, to be drafted by the executive branch in the 36 Guam legislature. Again, this is an effort to uh, you know, assert one voice, um, a consistent voice in regards to policy decisions uh, and international and regional relations for Guam. Uh, we are also working on documented engagement with Micronesian leaders to strategize a sub-regional approach to Guam's inclusion. Uh, as many of you know, our neighbors are currently in the uh, process of renegotiating the terms of their compact agreements and as an unincorporated territory, we are not included in those conversations and negotiations, although we you know, arguably bear one of the biggest impacts as a result of it. Uh, so we would we are really working to to have a presence, even if only an observer status. Uh, we continue to develop new partnerships with uh, island sustainability and strengthening of our current partnerships. A lot of this really is just organizational work so that we can understand what, you know, what is being done on behalf of Guam and how do those things align and work together. Uh, the emerging opportunities include engaging with Micronesian leaders to discuss uh, further sub-regional opportunities, maximizing our UN Special Rapporteur findings and expanding international partnerships. Again, the, the work on this level is really critical uh, in, in a policy scope. So our uh, participation at the UN level is, um, it's always a challenge because we are so far away. And uh, unfortunately, even with the COVID-19 pandemic, for whatever reason, the United Nations has not um, created virtual opportunities for us to participate. And so it remains a challenge for us to, to get out to the UN and be present so that we can be included on the record. Um, but the, again, the special rapporteur filings and, and our previous participation is definitely helpful. Uh, we are working on aligning. We, we expect that we will be able to align local action with the Biden administration's environmental justice platform. There's a lot of very... Uh, helpful language in that platform that, that could theoretically empower Guam. Uh, the good news is that the Federal Environmental Protection Agency has recognized uh, the UN Rights of Indigenous Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which holds a lot of strong uh, policy language that can help us. Um, but the challenge really is trying to get the, the concept applied in a pragmatic way to Guam. Uh, our continuing movement on a UN visiting mission and a congressionally authorized plebiscite is in motion. And again, the work uh, with the engagement on the, U, uh, on the UN level is important to this, uh, this effort. Um, though we have a congressional representative, as you know, our, as an unincorporated territory, our, um, our position there is limited to a non-voting seat. So, it's uh, important for us to build federal partnerships, but to also create um, international pressure by working with the UN. Uh, some of our needs in accomplishing these goals include uh, more meaningful engagement with other team members. Uh, the work that the even the other groups are doing is important to us because it has to. We we have the challenge of asserting the connection between sovereignty, political status, and our ability to uh, effectuate sustainable practices on the island. In general, our stance is that uh, if, we are, if we are not meaningfully included in the system of government because of our territorial status, if we do not have sovereignty over our island, our people, our natural resources, it 
remains a challenge to uh, create policy level decisions that will impact us in a, a real way. So uh, this is really the, the premise of the work that we do. Uh, we are still working through partnerships with the 36 Guam legislature. We've had uh, some great engagement with some of our legislators. Um, but it, again, it's really important that we take a unified stance uh, on all sides of the front. So aligning the efforts and language from the executive branch and the legislative branch uh, is, is going to be important for us. Um, we are we continue to work uh, to create multiple vehicles for international engagement. Again, this is a, a huge challenge because we are not members of the UN. Uh, we do not have a meaningful uh, vehicle for participation on a federal level either. And so um, it remains a challenge to find funding uh, for travel so long as virtual participation and access is not allowed or not uh, provided by the United Nations. Um, it's, uh, we, we see a, identified a need for a delegated authority from the governor to engage in regional, federal, and international conversations with our respective counterparts. Um, again, the effort with uh, trying to organize our presence and our current, our ongoing and past uh, engagements with both international and federal partners is important so that we can have a, a more consistent and unified approach to these engagements. Um, we are uh, concerned about a, a streamlined mechanism for regional, federal, and international communication. In a lot of ways, this is, uh, I guess, a good way to kind of understand this is to, the, the idea is to try to create like a federal, regional, international clearinghouse, so to speak. Um, that way we can consolidate all of these engagements mm -hmm. and ensure that we are consistent in the way that we engage uh, on a regional, federal, international level. Uh, that's it for the most part. Um, are there any questions? Okay, this is just Mossy. Thank you, Melvin. Now we will hear from the data and public engagement team, co-chaired by Dr. Ricky Hernandez of the Guam International Airport Authority, Rindrati Limtiako of the Pacific Daily News, and Jonas Makapinlak of the UOG Integrated Marketing and Communications. Hafidei. Uh, thanks, Lauren, and, and thanks uh, to my team members. Uh, I'll be reporting on behalf of Rindrati as well as Jonas. And thanks, everyone, for um, all of the updates. I want to just uh, talk about the results uh, first off. Um, the G3 dashboard has obviously been updated and, and refined with uh, the primary indicators on its actual landing page. Um, you can access the G3 dashboard through g3dashboard.guam.gov. That's again, g3dashboard.guam.gov. Um, or you can navigate through the G3 website to locate the direct link. Uh, from the last biannual uh, meeting update, the G3 dashboard has been revamped uh, to be user-friendly and engaging with more information about uh, the goals that uh, we have. Uh, if you move to the next slide, and we'll probably have to toggle back and forth, um, if you look at the G3, this is the G3 dashboard uh, from before, and really special thanks to Rita Bernardo, uh, if we toggle to the next slide, who has um, really made uh, significant uh, strides in terms of being able to um, Im uh, improve upon the presentation of the G3 dashboard. And so on this slide, you see the G3 dashboard landing page has been uh, revised and it's actually simplifying the view of the primary indicators. Uh, for each category of action. And the primary ind indicators have been further refined to include uh, three to six indicators that uh, is most relevant to the high level goals um, for each category of action. And so, for example, uh, one of the primary indicators under healthy and prosperous communities is farmers, as you can see. And the metric shows that total farmers listed with uh, the Department of Agriculture and gives us an idea of how many are contributing to local food production on island and what policies and programs can help improve our local food systems. Uh, the indicators also show the status of where we are with collecting data and making progress. And so the, the quote measuring status indicates that we are in process of collecting updated data sets, uh, the on track 
status indicates that we're on track to measuring or to achieving these goals by 2033. And if you look on the top uh, on the menu bar, you'll, you'll also have the ability to navigate to the category of action web pages uh, where you'd be able to view, if you do, if you do click on them on the, on the website, uh, you'd be able to view the category of actions uh, such as healthy and prosperous communities on the top left and its relevance to the global uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, there's also a web page uh, and you'll see it there on the right. It kind of has a drop down menu there. And that shows you all of the G3 implementation projects that we've been seeing videos on uh, and highlights the high level metrics uh, for those, but it includes conservation core, community garden, uh, the G3 commitment badge program, et cetera. And so we invite everyone to browse the dashboard at your leisure and to learn more about uh, G3's progress. And special thanks to all of the, uh, the different teams that have been providing uh, the data sets and information. And uh, we will work closely with the heads or the directors of the agencies and organizations uh, to try to continuously provide that data uh, to uh, Rita Bernardo and the G3 team. Uh, if we can toggle back to the um, Okay, so the other results, uh, data collection uh, protocols have been established with the point of contacts from the GovGuam agencies. Uh, and we also have had the privilege of working with and garnering support from all the major media and communication groups on Guam. Uh, so special thanks uh, to all of them. And they have helped us uh, get the word out regarding upcoming events, uh, G3 events, safety advisories for our G3 uh, Conservation Corps beautification projects and, and, and many, many other um, events. Uh, we're also working with volunteers to develop an app uh, that can be used to help track sustainable actions that will help contribute um, to our impacts and, and statistics. Uh, we're excited for many great projects that will be uh, that will help bring knowledge to the general public and encourage them to get involved. Uh, we did uh, launch the G3 updates as part of the CIS monthly, an email uh, newsletter sent out every month. And uh, the team has also uh, included partner listings, volunteer information, uh, the dashboard updates, and, and more to provide more information via our uh, web home. And I think there's one bullet point here if we forgot to add here is the hiring of Kyle Mandipat, uh, who's been an excellent uh, voice and advocate for uh, the, the, the goals of G3. And I think there's also been some uh, additional hires, uh, but that's uh, some of the results since April, 2021. Uh, some exact expected results in uh, by April 2022. Uh, obviously, our next steps uh, for the dashboard is to continue to strategically build more data and information into the category of action web pages uh, that will tell a deeper story of our G3 progress. Uh, and we've established data collection protocols with our different points of contacts from the GovLAM agencies, and we'll be working through these POCs uh, to migrate data onto the dashboard in the coming months. And we're looking to also improve the ways uh, people can further engage with the dashboard through our, our community engagement strategies. Um, additionally here, we look forward to uh, launching a quarterly publication and support materials soon, as well as uh, establishing a program for early sustainable development goals, education that will be available to school children and other students, including uh, ways for them to be linked into curriculum. Uh, we want to also set up a consistent distribution network for original and engaging programming uh, that can be shared. And this would include podcasts, uh, video pro uh, products or productions and more. And we also hope to bring lessons and discussions on sustainability to the village level with town hall style events at our mayor's offices. Uh, some emerging opportunities are uh, partners at Hawaii Green Growth are in initial conversations with the FSM and the Republic of the Marshall Islands and launching their own green growth initiatives and dashboards. And so G3 will be assisting Hawaii Green Growth on developing a community of practice. So, and this is what uh, was mentioned by uh, Celeste, uh, that our island neighbors can join uh, the green growth effort. And then uh, the opportunity for us to bring our messages and lessons to the digital space where content is more readily consumed will be a great area of advancement uh, for us. And lastly, with our needs in accomplishing uh, goals, we're going to continue data acquisition with our POCs. And we'll be working, we're gonna to try to work with uh, obviously a lot of the directors of the agencies that do provide uh, the information are here, but with the POCs, if they, uh, we would we would hope that uh, we'll, we'll continue to work with the heads of all the agencies to provide those in a timely manner as, as efficiently as possible. 
Um, we'll also um, be creating content uh, from G3 working group members for dashboard, website, and community engagement strategies. Uh, we'll be accepting content ideas for outreach programs and programming, and I think feedback is very important, uh, as well as uh, partnering uh, or partner support uh, will be continued, uh, continued to be needed uh, for programming and, and content creation. Uh, and I just wanted to say thanks to the team, Kyle, um, Mandapat and his, and his group, um, the communications team at G3, as well as uh, Rita Bernardo with the data, uh, as well as Lauren and, and Austin and everyone, uh, just great job. Uh, we're, I, I'm just really reporting on a lot of the work that they've been doing. And so I uh, really appreciate all of the hard work that they've done uh, throughout the six months. And we look forward to the next uh, six months and, and, and supporting their, uh, their efforts. And so with that, thank you, Lauren. Um, shoot back over to you, thanks. Kyle Dehillig uh, is the G3 Youth Ambassador Chair. Kyle, whenever you're ready. Suzuis Masi. Manana Suzuis is on half a day. The Guang Green Growth Youth Ambassadors have continued our work in our youth organizations and intergovernmental programs. And we're happy to report that the Guam Youth Climate Strike has conducted three education for us bias presentations to high school students on topics centering on energy, food security, and well-being. Over the summer and the last six months, our Guam Green Growth Youth Ambassadors have participated in conservation, youth development, island vaccination, and cultural programs. And we see opportunities in developing environmental curricula, bolstering youth programs, and professional development trainings. And so by April of 2022, we hope to develop a G3 recruitment process to involve more youth collaboration region-wide. Along the lines of youth empowerment and accomplishing our goals, we seek guidance through committed mentorship and a G3 Youth Ambassador Coordinator. One resource we strive to care for is our Hano. And Shante Kichitsu, a Guam Green Growth Youth Ambassador, will share more about her work with Protect Guam Waters in the next slide. Hi everyone, Guanghui Si Shante Kitucha. I am one of the G3 Youth Ambassadors and I'm also a member of the youth organizing group called Protect Guam Water. I humbly ask for your support in our position that aims to protect our Northern Guam lands aquifer from contamination due to the massive live firing range complex that is being constructed right above the aquifer. The petition calls on local and national leaders to protect this vital resource of our community it also relates to a few sustainable developmental goals, such as clean water and sanitation, climate action, land below water, and life on land. Here is a flyer with a QR code that you can scan on your phone, and I will also provide the link to the petition in the chat. Thank you, and see you Maasi. And Dr. Lina, see you Maasi, and the attention me too. We're done with the G3 Youth Ambassadors. Thank you, Kyle and Shante, for our G3 uh, and all the other G3 working group chairs for presenting your updates. All your updates will be incorporated into the G3 action framework to be reviewed by the governor and the lieutenant governor for their approval. Thank you for the work that you and your teams do and have put into the G3 action framework and its implementation. And I'm sure that we will see so many awesome results in the upcoming months. So um, because we are running a little over time, we'd like to uh, allow the Lieutenant Governor to give remarks to the working group. All right, well, I just wanted to thank everybody uh, for all the great work that uh, not only you're doing, but you're also capturing. And I just wanted to remind everybody that although uh, there are lots of projects um, that are being personally led by G3, there are other projects um, that, and I guess our quest is to identify all the moving parts around the government and around the island that help support and, um, and move things along. And in that regard, G3 uh, is meant to empower and enable um, these projects uh, to get into an area of success. So I do wanna thank everybody that is, um, that is doing such great work. I'm very proud of the recognition that our island is getting. But even more than that, I'm proud of the commitment that we're doing to make sure that we see a sustainable future. That really is the key part of this. It's about enabling local action, uh, enabling local change agents, um, and uh, helping to recover a lot of the innovation um, that we know exists 
um, as part of our internal island wisdom. So I want to thank all of you for everything that you're doing. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I think uh, we're going to take some questions from uh, the media and the public at this time. So um, if you have a question, uh, if you're in the media, I think we can do that first. Um, please go ahead and raise your hand uh, and uh, we'll get these uh, questions answered. Any questions from uh, any member of the local media at this time? I know that is a lot of information. I'm hopeful that our media <laughs> partners will be able to uh, maybe address uh, and cover a lot of these things. All right, uh, and now uh, for uh, members of uh, the general public or anybody in the room, um, does anybody have any questions um, regarding any of the topics that were covered today? I think everybody is absorbing everything. Uh, well, I do want to thank everybody. And I guess uh, I will pass it on to uh, Lauren and Kyle, uh, who have, uh, who, and I understand that we have some great recognition that is uh, coming right up. So thank you again for all your efforts. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. And yes, indeed, if you've got any questions that come into your brain, uh, throughout the rest of the presentation of the meeting, feel free to check out our website, uh, guamgreengrowth.org, and you can have contacts through there, and we'll get uh, all the answers to you, maybe even in your inbox. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our working group members for all those amazing presentations. That is exactly what this group is made of, the commitment to work together to find solutions and contribute to our economy. That goes for the villages, for the community organizations, for the business leaders. And right now, speaking of which, it's time to recognize two such groups that have made that commitment as well. Please welcome our G3 Commitment Coordinator, Ms. Anania Nauta. Sitas Maasi Kyle and Hafa Day, everyone. I'm really excited to give some updates on the Guam Green Growth Commitment Badge Program. So from, last, uh, from the last biannual meetings presentation, we had just launched this program to the public after starting with the village mayors and awarding them for their amazing continued work towards sustainability in their respective communities. Since then, I've met with multiple businesses and nonprofits all working towards sustainability in their own ways and hoping to achieve the first two badges we introduced of SDG 1, No Poverty, and SDG 2, Zero Hunger. So as per our rollout schedule, I'm pleased to open up our next group of badges, SDG 3, Good Health and Wellbeing, and SDG 9, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. We want to hear about all the work that businesses, nonprofits, or uh, educational institutions and community groups are doing to achieve these goals. So as a reminder, there are three ways to achieve a badge. That is to contribute, implement, and support. Contributing entails taking action by providing time, effort, supplies, and sponsorships towards organizations or actions that reflect the SDG. For example, being a sponsor for an event or an organization that supports sustainable entrepreneurs and innovation. For implementing, that involves initiatives and policies that build island resilience and a circular economy through locally appropriate solutions. Uh, an example of this can be creating a program that encourages employees to be more active, which relates to SDG badge three, good health and well-being. For support, this requires utilizing your personnel. This can be through employees participating in or hosting events and efforts that benefit the SDG you're applying for. Examples of this can be having employees participate in building a community garden, organizing a 5K that promotes good health, and even volunteering at a soup kitchen. So either of these actions can help you to attain an SDG badge. Now, since we launched this program, like I mentioned earlier, I've met with several businesses and nonprofits to go over their efforts and help them achieve these badges. There were two out of the group that completed their application and have done tremendous work to achieve our first two badges of no poverty and zero hunger. So we'll be awarding them here today. Our first awardee is none other than Bank of Guam. To support no poverty, Bank of Guam is committed to education demonstrated through their investment in their students with the Life Teen Expo, EFIT Scholarship, and Life Scholarship. They also provide financial literacy to our island community and have assisted families during the pandemic with signing up for government support. In addition, they've, rec they've organized direct assistance efforts such as food and school supply drives that have benefited nonprofits like Catholic Social Services, Harvest House, Vero, Salvation Army, and Mignetlu. 
Now to support zero hunger, Bank of Guam has worked alongside many organizations to provide sustenance to those in need. They've had biannual food drives, supported subsistence farming and farm to table organizations, and have volunteered for as well as financially supported planting projects. So congratulations to Bank of Guam and to Zeus Maasi for building a sustainable future for our island. I believe we do have Miss Jackie Maradi on the call if she'd like to share a few words with us. Thank you very much, Anania. Um, we're very happy to be obviously part of uh, the Green Growth Commitment. We are gonna be celebrating our 50th anniversary uh, next year. Um, and so a lot of the SDGs, actually our founder, Susie Young Guerrero, um, had embedded in our organization. And so we're very, very familiar with a lot of the SDG goals um, that are, have now been formalized. Just a word to uh, both Celeste and Kate, um, yes, islands and islanders are leaders, um, but we're also teachers. And I think the ability to learn what we have um, worked on with these projects and our ability to share what's being learned is really an important part of our commitment and our, our involvement with this, this incredibly important program. So thank you again, Anania. Thank you to the team. Uh, we couldn't be happier. We're looking forward to, um, to working uh, more with you all and the rest of the team. Thank you. So to us, Maasi, Jackie, and congratulations again to Bank of Guam. So our next awardee is GTA. GTA supports no poverty by partnering with Guam Community College's apprenticeship program to provide essential training that helps promote their employees. Additionally, GTA employees collected over a thousand items, such as clothing and toiletries, that were donated to Harvest House. They're planning another donation drive for women in recovery at Salvation Army as part of an empowering women campaign to assist women in rejoining the workforce. GTA continues to support these organizations to assist those in need. For Zero Hunger, GTA has contributed to Salvation Army and Catholic Social Services through food pantries and volunteer service uh, with their Team Up for Guam program. They support Guahan Sustainable Culture by providing telecommunication services to their office in Hadetnya, and their employees also volunteer with GSC. They've helped build garden beds and shelves, planted seeds for their nursery, and transplanted greens into new garden beds, all to support Zero Hunger on our island. Congratulations and Suzos Maasi GTA for building a sustainable future for Guam. Now for any businesses and organizations who are interested in creating a sustainable future for our island, you can visit guamgreengrowth.org slash G3 commitment or email us at G3 at triton.uog.edu. Suzos Maasi. Thank you very much, Anania Nauta. She's so tall. Congratulations, GTA and the Bank of Guam. It has been a morning of updates, and as you can see, the work continues right now. Uh, you know, we'd like to again say thank you to everybody who's had the opportunity to kind of check in and join in with us. If you are just a member of the community or the public who has had the opportunity to kind of see what we do, again, we have plenty of opportunities for you to get involved as well. Just visit our website. That's guamgreengrowth.org. You can check out the dashboard as we've been talking about, and you can also uh, check out some volunteer opportunities opportunities too. So big shout outs again to everybody who's jumped on and become a part of the solution with us. We are just about ready to wrap things up this morning. And before we do, it's time for closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our G3 co-chair, UOG president, Dr. Thomas Christ. It's just Masi to everyone for all of this great uh, reporting and all the work that's gone into uh, the material that's created the report. And I think something that's especially notable about this is how many of our organizations, companies, um, or organizations, units of the government, um, are incorporating these goals into their regular work. So this isn't all something that we're doing on the side, it's all becoming part of what we do. As we have at the University of Guam with our Parahula strategic plan um, is benchmarked against the, the uh, sustainable development goals. And so it fits in. So our work is, is tied in with these goals. And that's really what we need to do. I mean, the whole idea of sustainability, being able to carry on uh, our, our work uh, uh, into the future and to sustain our natural environment is all part of that. So it, it, this has been a great um, tutorial on how to do that. Lots of examples, and I think we've all gotten great ideas for how to do it even better. So it's Masi to everyone for the hard work, and I look forward to the next phase.
Thank you so much, Dr. Christ. And that's going to do it for us today. Thank you again to everybody for joining us here this morning. Uh, for any more information on today's updates, you can check out our website again. I know we were streaming this morning live on the governor's Facebook. So thank you to everybody uh, who joined us via that platform as well. From everybody here at Guam Green Growth, I'm Kyle Mandipat saying Zeus Masi, Biba Guam Green Growth, and Biba Guam. Have a great day, everyone. Hi, I'm Jesse Alec, and I am G3. Number 14, life below water. Uh, PD is surrounded by water. Well, most of it is surrounded by water. And we have a great coral reef right out here. And it's, it's important for us as, as PD residents because we live, um, we live in the area and that we contribute to the growth of not only the coral reef, but also to the, to the life that lives in the ocean. And so in working with our Manumkul and working with our Manhobin to educate them about the pollution, about sedimentation, about plant growth, uh, even washing cars and how all of that affects our coral reef and, and our preserves is important because we live in PT and because we live in, in a very, you know, in a part of Guam that is uh, reliant on this reef and, and the preserves really. And so in working with our Manhoban and our Manamko, I think that we'll get the word out to, to achieve uh, Badge 14.